Well, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today, October 19th, 2023. My name is Lisa Strasbaugh, and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at the Jack Joseph and Morton Mandel School of Applied Social Sciences here at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. We will be spending um, about the next hour reviewing um, curriculum, field, discussing a bit about Cleveland, the application process, um, and answering your questions. Um, I do know that a number of you had pre-submitted questions, and so I do have those um, in the notes section um, to make sure that we do our best to address um, all of your questions. Um, we do have quite a number of folks on the call, which is very exciting. Um, and so if we do uh, need to run over, um, I had put my um, personal email in the chat. And so please feel free to email me anything that we do not cover um, in terms of, um, you know, if your schedule allows you to stay over, I'm certainly um, able to continue on the call after the one o'clock hour. Um, however, I want to be respectful of, of other people's time. Um, you are certainly able to contact me directly. So we're gonna get going and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Could I make sure that everyone has, um, has muted um, their microphone, please? And I'm gonna let a few more folks into our, our waiting room. We have more people that have joined us. So let me just do that first, please. But if the rest um, of you could please mute your, um, your microphones, that will help with the quality of this recording that will be, um, will be sent to each one of you. Um, I would ask that is, if anyone is interested in the weekend or online format of the Masters of Social Work, if you could please um, include that in the chat. I'd like this session to be able to be as specific as possible and to meet your needs. However, I recognize um, that that might be challenging in terms of, um, in terms of um, the vast diversity of, of students. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that everyone has muted. And if you're not, then I'm just going ahead and um, muting you independently as we are recording this session. It will be shared to everyone here in attendance um, and sent out 24 hours um, after the session has been completed. So this is um, this is sort of the ultimate. Um, to take one moment here and make sure that I can mute everyone. Hey, okay. 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 Okay, thank you so very please, much. Please. We do have more, more uh, guests. Excuse me, excuse me. Yes. My, I was, uh, it was my, like, uh, my network got interrupted. So the question you asked, I couldn't get it. I need everyone to mute, please, so that we can move forward with our session today. Uh, uh, okay, I thought you, uh, you asked a question and you, need, uh, you needed an answer. I'm going to just go ahead and, and mute you so that we can go forward. I was asking if there were any students who were interested in the weekend or online format for, th for those students to place that information into the chat so that I could okay. um, provide a session that's most helpful. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. So I would like to take a moment to ask um, a current student who's gonna be joining the call today to introduce herself. So Arabina. Hey everyone. Oh, 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 oh. 
I'll go ahead and mute myself to see if that is helpful to you. Perhaps it's the space that you're in. Right. <laughs> I think perhaps that there are two computers. Um, perhaps you're logged in on your phone and on a computer that's giving you that feedback or you're in another space. All right, well, while I let um, Arabina figure out the technology, we're gonna move forward here to um, an overview of the curriculum. So the Masters of Social Work um, here at the Mandel School has a rich history. We have been in existence for more than 100 years. Um, we are the number nine um, school of social work in the nation and the number one school um, in the state of Ohio. And we um, take great pride um, in that history, and yet we are very forward-facing and um, strive to um, be cutting edge and to be um, establishing not only best practices, but to provide um, leadership in the field of social work. Um, anytime, Arabina, that you're able to jump in, just go ahead and um, and uh, join us. I think that perhaps she needed to log out and then log back in. We'll see if we can have a little bit of success. So the Masters of Social Work at the Mandel School is provided and accredited in three specific formats. And actually, um, we're almost at the point, and I have one uh, brief comment about a fourth format um, or um, modality, if you will, um, that we'll be offering shortly. And so those three formats include um, a full-time on-campus program. So think of that as a traditional Monday through Thursday, Monday through Friday, courses once a week, um, courses here in person full-time um, in Cleveland. Um, and that is almost exclusively a full-time um, program. And then we do have two part-time um, formats, one that's called weekend and that another um, that is um, our online program. And so I do have um, a variety of um, hyperlinks throughout this presentation, which as I mentioned, we'll be sharing that with you. And so for instance, the on-campus that's blue, if you'll see here as I hover over, there'll be some hyperlinks to some materials and some direct links to our website. So the, um, the full-time MSW program is offered um, if you have not completed a bachelor's of social work, which actually is the instance for the, the largest number and percentage of our students here at the Mandel School. So many of our students are what we would call traditional, meaning um, that they come to us with maybe a psychology major or sociology or ethnic studies or English, or perhaps an advanced degree in a different discipline. And in that case, if you're enrolled as a full-time student, the program is four semesters in length. Um, we always begin in the fall and it runs the fall, the spring. We technically take a break in the summertime, although we do offer a few courses. Um, and then we um, complete your second year in the fall again, and then you commence in May of that second year. Um, we are um, looking to offer what we're calling an on-campus extended plan. So it's not as extensive as our full-time. Um, however, the structure would be the same. The faculty are the same. Um, you still are here in Cleveland. And instead of taking, um, let's say, 15 um, to perhaps 16 credit hours per semester, um, you'd be taking 10 credit hours per semester, but with the same structure of not um, being enrolled in coursework in the summertime. Um, there's not a, a hyperlink because it literally is still with the faculty and being worked through. So there's not mention of that on our website. And this is the first time we're actually including it um, 
in, uh, in an information session to share with students as an option. So you will not find it um, in our current application uh, because I said it's still in the process of going through faculty review to be approved. Our third option is our part-time, exclusively part-time online program. And so um, if you have not completed a bachelor's of social work, um, that program and that degree will take eight semesters to complete. Um, similarly constructed, to our weekend program, and that too would take eight semesters. So um, the structure for our online and our weekend program is, is that each semester, you are gonna be taking a different number of credit hours per semester. However, they are in a, um, a predictable manner. And so um, we provide each student with a pattern of enrollment so that you would know exactly when you are taking um, a lighter load and what courses you'll be taking each semester. Um, and so we find that that is helpful, especially for working adults that tend to be enrolled in either our online or our weekend program. So I feel like that when I'm having a discussion at this time of the year with a student, with students who are coming to this event, um, who are interested in a variety um, of different formats that it's helpful to talk about the similarities as well as the unique components. And so it's important to know that all three of the formats are accredited, that um, the degree, if you, um, if you are a traditional student, is um, 60 credit hours. If you are what we call an advanced standing student, that the degree is 39 credit hours. Um, we will utilize a flipped classroom model, heavily um, leaning into technology. However, also heavily leaning into a cohort model where you have community. And we can talk a little bit more about what that looks like. Um, also, I think important to know that all of our faculty te teach in multiple formats. I always want, um, especially our weekend and our online um, students to know um, there's not any hierarchy in terms of faculty. It's not as if um, that faculty on the lower uh, end of the totem pole, if you will, are teaching in those courses um, that many of our faculty will teach in a variety of formats. Um, all students have access to the Harris Library, which um, is a great resource for students. So the Harris Library is located here um, in the Jack Joseph and Morton Mandel School of Applied Social Sciences, and it is content um, exclusive to the world of social work and nonprofit, since um, the Mandel School does provide an MSW and an MNO, and there are three full-time um, librarians. There's a great deal of digital coursework um, and resources that would be available. Um, all of our programs, all of our degrees do require the same number um, of field hours. Um, that would be 900 and 500. Some of the unique um, differences um, and components between the formats um, would be uh, the frequency in which they meet. So our on-campus program, your course will meet once during the week um, and runs over a 14-week calendar. Our online program, for instance, has a bit of a shorter calendar. It doesn't necessarily align with the university calendar. Uh, it tends to start a week earlier than the university calendar. So that's important to realize and to, to be aware of. Um, the path of study uh, options. Okay. I'm sorry, can everyone make sure to be okay. Thank you so very much. Um, the, um, the path of study options are unique and some of the scholarships are unique. And so I have um, specific um, content and we will um, get to those slides. So here's a little bit more of the content. And so in terms of online and weekend. And so one of the biggest differences um, and unique aspects of our online and weekend is the path of study offerings. So if you were to choose to be enrolled in the full-time on-campus um, uh, format, you would be able to choose one of our nine paths of study. However, in online, the three that would be available are Community Practice for Social Change, which of course is our macro uh, path of study, as well as Children, Youth, and Family, and Mental Health with Adults. If you're interested in our weekend program that meets one weekend a month, each month, 
And generally a class is completed in two months, meaning in one semester, you will generally be taking two content courses. And then once your second semester has begun, then you will be taking two courses and a field seminar course. And so I've given some examples of what time of day um, those courses meet. They will vary based on the credit hour and um, the faculty schedule. Um, both the online and the weekend program, um, as I mentioned, take about two and a half um, years um, to complete um, without a BSW and the, um, the um, on-campus program does take um, a, a bit less than two years. Sorry, I'm just admitting another guest. So I have mentioned about advanced standing. So all th um, three or four of our for formats will honor advanced standing. If you have earned a bachelor's of social work in the last seven years from accredited institution, um, we will award you 21 credits towards your degree, meaning that you will be re uh, required to enroll in 39 credits here at the Mandel School um, to be able to complete your MSW. And so I'm hoping that at this point that my dear friend Arabina, current um, second year student has logged in and um, if she's able to, at this point, introduce herself. Arabina? Lisa, let me know if you can hear me. Loud and clear. Okay, um, I apologize for uh, that initial internet issue. Uh, my name is Arabina Crump, I'm from Ghana. Um, I'm currently a full-time Master of Social Work student, and my concentration is Community Practice for Social Change. I am happy to meet you all, and I'm happy to answer all your questions. Uh, I'm currently doing an internship, which I'll talk about later in the session. So nice to meet you all. Great, thank you so much. Um, we know that that sometimes um, students have issues on their end with technology, and sometimes we do as as well. So we appreciate your your grace and your patience. So regardless of the format um, that you would be enrolled in um, as a traditional student, um, you would be enrolled in a generalist curriculum. I think this is very important and distinctive at the Mandel School in that um, the faculty actually during the pandemic um, dismantled our traditional um, curriculum, which is was composed of traditional three credit hour courses and decided um, that it would um, behoove future student social work leaders um, to have more depth as well as breadth. And so this is a variety of the courses that all students will take, um, including their chai course. And so Arabina, chai is always sort of complicated for me to explain. So why don't you talk about it a little bit since you actually went through it? Yes, uh, so I took the chai class that will be in the first semester is a one week class and it, the full name of CHAI is Change Agent in Intensive. And so uh, that class is basically an overview of the entire pro program. Um, and then you'll be able to also take a field trip to see some uh, locations which tackles social work problems in the community here in Cleveland. And so it is just a one week class. Um, more or less about what the program is about, what you, you will be looking forward to in terms of classes and courses, and then uh, how you can be a positive change agent in the community. And uh, I think basically that is what the course is about, but it's just one week and we really enjoyed it because it gave us a, a view of what we, we, were ex we would be expecting in, in, in the classes that will be taken for the overall program. So, yeah. Great, thanks so much, Urbina. So these um, um, are a listing of all of the nine paths of study um, broken out by the formats. And so, um, Arabina, why don't you share with us um, what you thought 
you might um, select as your path of study when you were applying to the Mandel School and then how you came to decide on community practice for social change ultimately as your path of study. Okay, so um, as Lisa said earlier, there are nine paths of study. Uh, initially, I wanted to do health because I was drawn to um, the, the health disparities in the community that we live in, uh, both the community that I came from and the community that I live in here. Uh, but after carefully uh, looking in, I mean, being part of the program, especially in my first semester and the second semester, uh, I decided that community practice for social change was my interest uh, because everything starts from the community. We live in the community. And so I believe that uh, community practice was my interest, um, specifically uh, more of homelessness and housing issues that are affecting uh, families and children and youth. And so for me, I set up for community practice for social change because I want to be a positive change agent in the community, be able to make a social impact in the community that I live in. And I believe that all the various aspects of uh, all the various parts of study would also come into the community somehow, because at the end of the day, if you have uh, if the, the individual is having health issues, the individual belongs to the community as well. So some of the factors in the community might be affecting the client and causing that health issue. And so I believe that it, it was good for me to start from the community that I live in to be able to look at the issues that the individual is having uh, because it could be an environmental problem that is affecting the client. And so uh, being able to do community practice for social change is something that I believe that you'll be able to make a positive impact in the community in general. And in the long run, it would affect the individual. So that was the reason why I decided to do community practice for social change. That's wonderful, Arabina. So I was um, taking a peek at the chat and we did have a couple of questions about the flipped classroom. Would you mind um, explaining that since you've experienced it? Okay, um, so I think that for the flip classroom system that we have here, um, for for uh, Mandel specifically, um, it works very well for me as a student. Um, it is both interactive. There's participation in class. There's assignment at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, you you are able to balance all those factors to be able to be uh, excel in your academic work. And so for Mandel, uh, most of the the most of the classroom experiences is more of like, I think it's different from what we have in our country where we came, where I, I am from Ghana. So it's it's different in terms of how the teaching and learning is, the instructional approach, if I can say it that way. Um, there's traditional classroom learning activities, there's homework assignments and the reverse. So there's more of student engagement in the classroom, there's uh, readings to do at the end of the day, and then you have to come back to the classroom to discuss uh, all the readings that you've done and participation is part of of your assessment at the end of the day. And so I think that uh, it was it's great for us to be able to um, not only have like the, the content, but also be able to do some readings, engage with other students who have also had, and then even bring your experiences from, from all over, wherever you're coming from, bring those experiences to the classroom. And so I think that the flipped classroom way of learning or instructional approach is very effective because I have benefited from that. Uh, and then it helps with interactive discussions and problem solving and hands-on activities uh, that students need to be able to excel in their academic work. That was exceptional. Thanks so much, Arabina. Um, and I would just clarify 
that you are um, required to do a substantial amount of work, whether that's um, readings, um, videos, articles, chapters prior to class, and then you are engaged in much conversation. And so that certainly would be um, applicable for all of the formats. Um, mm -hmm. And so in the online program, um, you were engaged in a 90 minute live class um, class Zoom meeting, just such as this, um, generally in the late afternoon, early evening um, with your faculty and with your class members from across the US. And so therefore you will be engaging um, even though you are in an exclusively online course. And in the weekend program, there's a considerable amount of time that is spent um, doing pre-readings, um, as well as readings in between, let's say your meet your um, course meets the second um, weekend of September, and then again the second week of October, you would have work that you've actually done before class, and then work that you would complete between the September and the October um, time frame. Um, and you certainly will be taking advantage of some of the technologies. To, um, to maintain um, communications with your faculty and um, the rest of your classmates. So field, of, field education, of course, um, is the signature pedagogy of social work. And so this is important um, if you are trying to determine what are the differences between perhaps um, a PhD in clinical psychology and a master's of social work. And so um, field is critical um, and it is embedded. And um, at the Mandel School, it is a very synergistic experience, meaning that um, it begins very early on in your academic experience. If you are in an on-campus format, you would begin field immediately. Um, if you are enrolled in our online or weekend format, you would actually begin your field experience your second semester, just to allow you some time to acclimate to the constructs of each particular um, uh, format of the course. Um, and so these are just some images. Um, to the right is um, our, field, our field faculty team. One of the um, structures that I love about the field team is that each team member is assigned a certain format. And so if, um, if you are a, a weekend student, for instance, you're only going to be working with a faculty who's kind of the expert in um, in the weekend student, and they understand the um, the com the complicated um, life juggle that our weekend students have, in that they ex almost exclusively are working full time, you know, managing other responsibilities as well as going um, to school part time here at the Mandel School. And so I love the fact um, that these are not only MSWs. Um, but that are experts in field education, but that we also um, have identified them and have broken them down so that they will support um, the particular kind of format um, and meet the needs of students more specifically. Um, we can talk a little bit more about field in the Q&A, but I'm trying to be mindful of our time. Um, and I know that, that we started off a little bit late, so I'm just gonna move forward here to the next slide. Um, another component of the Mandel experience in our curriculum is our co um, collaborative practice or IPE. And so this is a course um, that is required um, for our um, for on-campus students in person. And then we're tweaking how um, our, um, our weekend and our online students can take advantage of this really very cutting edge um, um, academic experience whereby you are matched um, with a group of students across the Case Western University campus who are enrolled primarily in STEM oriented disciplines. And so you are assigned um, a community um, nonprofit organization who needs some assistance, who has a, a problem or a challenge that needs to be addressed. Um, generally, you're the only social worker in the group and these organizations um, very clearly have a social work need. So very often you're a leader in that group um, and sort of helping some of the other professionals, um, perhaps from um, genetics or 
uh, a student in SLP, understand um, the needs of students and, and to help those um, individuals understand um, their clients as people. Um, um, Arabina, would you like to talk about what your um, IPE um, community partner was for last year? Um, so for uh, IPE, um, ours was with Cleveland Clinic, and we had a project. The project, uh, the goal of the project was to provide a series of pamphlets, like very easy pamphlets, uh, with key clinical logistical considerations uh, for transitioning patients from pediatrics to adult nephrology care and uh, following kidney transplant. And so that is what we worked on as a team. Our team comprises of, uh, we had a nurse, we had a, a student doing medicine, we had nursing student, uh, I was the old, only social worker, um, but we had uh, a student doing dental medicine also in our team. And so that was great because it was more of like a collaborative uh, skills and experiences coming together for us to be able to accomplish that project. And that was great. It was great to engage with uh, different uh, students from different field. It helped us increase our engagement and relationality um, because in the medical field in general, you realize that you have to work with all these uh, health professionals in the field to be able to assist clients. And so this this uh, course was great and it, it brought up a lot of uh, engagement, collaboration, which, which in the long term, will be very beneficial for students. So, yeah. Excellent, thanks, Arabina. So in terms of um, talking about collaboration, we did want to um, highlight that there are five um, dual degrees that students can take advantage of. And so there's a hyperlink here with some more specific information. Um, probably the most popular um, degree would be the two degrees that we offer here um, within the Mandel School. And so that is the MSW in, um, in combination with our Masters of Nonprofit. But we also have a quite robust uh, relationship um, and um, provide a, um, a nice number of students who are enrolled in social work and, social work and bioethics. Um, each year, we have a few students in um, social work and law, public health, um, always has a, a, a nice number of students in terms of enrollment. And then um, our colleagues across the street from the Weatherhead, and Biz Weatherhead School of Business, um, we do offer the MSW and MBA um, as a dual degree. Um, each um, relationship is unique between the schools. And so I would just um, suggest that if you are interested to go ahead and just click um, each has um, our own deadlines, our own processes, our own admission steps, and so it would be important to be mindful you do need to be admitted um, into both of those um, degrees, not only um, the Mandel School's application, but the variety of other schools. Uh, we do have um, a number of certificates that you might want to add. Um, these are all fully in person at this time, um, but you might want to um, add some of these um, in addition to your, your coursework. We would be remiss if we um, didn't talk of just a smidge about um, our short-term study abroad programs. It is one of those distinctive Mandel school components. And so I love the fact that this provides um, students an opportunity to study abroad. Perhaps that had been an interest of yours um, as an undergrad and you weren't able to accomplish it. And as opposed to being a semester long experience, these um, take place during our breaks and there are um, information that is linked. Um, there are nine research and training um, centers that are affiliated just with the Mandel School, and so um, that also is hyperlinked. Um, our faculty are um, exceptional in the classroom. They are um, researchers and leaders within many of the research centers. So they are um, applying what they are learning, they are researching, 
and they still are able um, to provide a high level of mentorship for our students. Um, the average in-person classroom um, is about um, 15 to 20 students. The classrooms actually only hold a maximum of 20 um, students, um, uh, 22 students in each physical room. Um, if your background is coming from a large public university, um, and that you you wonder if that will be your experience. We do not have any large um, classrooms in the two buildings that compose um, the Mandel School in terms of a lecture hall. Um, your, your, the largest classroom, as I said, is 22. Um, this is a slide pertaining specifically to some specific partner institutions. So based on time, I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to scholarships, which is always um, important. Um, and a, um, an, uh, an issue um, that is um, requires a great deal of energy and conversation. Um, and I know that there have been some, um, some questions in the chat already about that. Um, there is a hyperlink here to some important information, but I did want to just um, briefly talk about scholarship support. We will be having um, Julie Painter, the dedicated um, assistant director of financial aid. So she works exclusively for um, and with all of the students at the Mandel School. And there are about 400 of you in all types of formats and modalities and one of her. And so if you know anything about financial aid, that is an exceptionally low um, staff to student ratio. So she will be um, assisting you in terms of um, in terms of federal loan, in terms of awarding and packaging you, in terms of your scholarship. Um, at the Mandel School, all students receive their scholarship amount at the um, time of receiving their admissions decision. Um, and so um, sometimes it, 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 you know, it does take us a, a number of weeks. I would say that's always a question on these calls. How long does it take really for a decision to be made? Well, one, the admissions committee needs to fully read your three to five page essay. Um, and depending on the complexity of your application, that does need a thorough review, as well as the financial aid needs to be considered. Um, because um, once the letter is sent saying, congratulations, you've been admitted, it also does include your um, specific scholarship amount. So all students receive some level of scholarship. Um, the scholarships here at the Mandel School are exclusively merit-based. They are not need-based. And there is only one application. It's the admissions application that we use for scholarships. So, um, I know that there are many people that have discovered the Leadership Fellows Program, and there was a pre-submitted question about that. So we do provide seven um, fully funded scholarships for our most exceptional students each academic year. So um, out of about 200 students, um, actually a little, a little bit less than that actually, um, only seven receive that full scholarship. You do not need to do anything um, to put yourself under consideration. Essentially the process would be when the admissions committee is reviewing your application for admission, if they deem that your um, qualifications are stellar, that, that then they recommend your name to the leadership fellow committee, then they were, will further review and call down that group. Then they will further from that group, just um, make decisions about making um, Zoom phone calls with students um, to further have a sense of their um, professional backgrounds and experiences, and then award the seven scholarships. So obviously, if you receive your um, your um, initial scholarship level, if you were to be awarded um, the leadership fellow um, scholarship, that would be what would be awarded to you. Um, so in our next slide, I wanted to provide a little bit of specifics. I know that perhaps sometimes these numbers seem daunting, um, but it's really been our experience that we want to be transparent with students. Um, I recognize I've got about 15 minutes and um, perhaps we'll end up talking about um, much about the scholarship information. Um, however, Julie Painter um, will be providing um, uh, some webinars similar to this. We'll start those in January. Um, they'll be provided at, um, at the 12 noon Eastern Standard Time as well as 
practice, the seven o'clock hour in the spring semester. And she will walk through very specifically um, scholarship opportunities for domestic students as well as international students. However, I did want to share with students um, what our current tuition rates are as well as to, um, I have um, chosen just based on um, who registered for this event. Um, it appeared as if most students were interested in an on-campus experience. However, um, within the, the hyperlink here, um, there is information about the averages for our um, weekend program scholarship level and our um, online scholarship level. Um, one of the differences that you might have noticed in one of the earlier slides is that the scholarship levels um, differ between the formats. So it is important to be mindful um, that you are considering the proper um, format when you're reviewing the, the scholarship um, groupings. Um, and so the tuition rate is a flat full-time rate for on-campus students. And so even though um, that it will vary from semester to semester um, based on path to path, um, the standard um, uh, tuition has been listed here. Um, the Mandel School is one of the few institutions that we are aware of in the entire country that provides um, a field award. And so this is something that is awarded directly to students in addition to their scholarship level. Um, and so all students receive the same amount if you are a full-time um, MSW student. Um, you will receive that uh, essentially as a work study, um, sort of in its structure in that you are paid directly um, in monthly installments. And so, um, so that $3,000 that is paid, currently being paid to our students is $750 in the four months that classes are running in the fall. And then again, um, $750 in the four months that classes are being offered in the springtime. Um, you'll notice obviously that last year, the university granted a, a, a smaller amount of, um, of field um, support. And so we are awaiting to hear um, what next year's um, amount will be. And so these are the the bottom line figures. Um, I see lots of questions in the chat, but and I will make sure to be attending to those. I do want to just get through the rest of our slides. Um, one of the decisions about enrolling at the Mandel School um, is learning about Cleveland and um, leaning into all of the opportunities that Cleveland provides. And so whether that's um, a field experience, um, or just the cultural, um, very culturally dense um, specific area within Cleveland where um, Case Western Reserve is housed um, is really a benefit. And so I've been talking a long time, so I'm going to mute myself and ask Arabina to talk a little bit more about feel that we covered a few slides ago. And if you could combine that with your thoughts about Cleveland. Um. So um, I failed for... Uh, last year was uh, with the Fairfax Renaissance Development Corporation. Uh, it's a nonprofit uh, located at Quincy Avenue. Um, what they do is they are dedicated to revitalization and sustainable development for the Fairfax uh, neighborhood uh, in terms of housing, just helping the residents to be able to um, have like recreational uh, parks in the neighborhood and helping them, but their main focus is housing. And so I did a lot of uh, community engagement with that work and then uh, did a lot of grants, right? And because it was a community uh, practice-based organization. And so that was the major things that we did. That was more of community development, housing initiative, um, they had partnership with various organizations, advocacy efforts, and all that. So I'll quickly just go to uh, this year's uh, field placement. It, I intended to do health. And so I landed uh, an opportunity at the Veterans Affairs, which is a, a medical cent center here in Cleveland. 
um, the department that I work is uh, the oncology and hematology department at the VA, which is the Veterans Affairs. Um, they normally, I mean, they are responsible for diagnosis, treatment, management of veterans uh, with cancer or blood related conditions. And so as a social worker, uh, more of helping with um, doing psychosocial assessment for clients, uh, working with clients in terms of uh, their support system and just being like a support to clients in general and learning in that process also, because I'm new to uh, oncology and hematology, so I'm learning. Um, but we do a lot of, and we work with palliative care, which is also a department that we work with. We also work with hospice because our clients normally uh, are referred to those departments as well. So that is what the major work that we do at oncology and hematology department. Um, I think, uh, Lisa, did you want did you want me to address anything else? When you talk a little bit about Cleveland, since you, um, even though you were in the U.S. Um, before you joined us for grad school, um, you, you were not a native to Cleveland. So what are your thoughts about Cleveland and living here? Wow. So, uh, yes. Um, so I was, I, I love Cleveland. I love the parks specifically, uh, the food, sports, music. There is Lake Uri. They have a lot of beautiful greenery and parks that you can hang out with people. And so that is one aspect of Cleveland that I like. I like the cultural attractions, the museum. So Cleveland, uh, the muse Cleveland Museum of Art is just right across the street from the from our school. And so anytime you feel stressed, you can just walk there and look around and you know, self-care and all that. So I think that that is one aspect uh, of Cleveland that you would love, the museums, the parks, um, the food, the sports, music. I mean, very beautiful things that uh, Cleveland has. Uh, I think what surprised me about Cleveland uh, was, uh, I think the cost of living is very good as compared to other places. Uh, and then the healthcare system. I didn't know that Cleveland Cl Clinic was one of the top medical centers in in the US, I'm like, wow, or probably even the world. And so uh, knowing that is great, there's cultural diversity. So you, you wouldn't feel like, you know, you're different. And so that is great, great. And then the green spaces are there for everybody. That is what I can say about Cleveland. Okay, that was a fabulous, really <laughs> thorough answer. Thanks so much, Irvina. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> All right, so we do have um, excellent um, faculty, as I had mentioned, as well as um, staff um, that support you. And so there are a variety of links here, and I'm just gonna be thoughtful because I knew that there are a number of people that are in process with their application, and I wanna make sure that we are able to spend some time. Um, so we are a school um, here at the university, and I can't say that that it would be the case for all nine of the graduate um, schools here at Case Western Reserve University. Each in, each school within the university has its own um, deadlines, fees, and um, application structure. However, at the Mandel School, there is not an application fee for admission. Um, there is not a requirement of the GRE. Um, we do, however, require that transcripts from any institution that you've attended where you have earned at least six credit hours that we need an unofficial transcript. Um, we do have a very important three to five page essay on my next slide. Um, it's just a brief review of what that essay needs to include. Um, your, for, your full resume outlining your past experiences and um, references. Um, there's a little bit of comment um, about our international applicants, um, that if English is your um, country's um, official language, you do not need to share with us a TOEFL. So in terms of the essay, which is a most important component, um, it is a, a two-part essay. Um, we do not need to, um, and we do not delineate or require how much of the three to five pages you utilize to answer part one and you use to answer part two. Um, however, both, um, both pieces do um, need to be included in that essay. And so these are just some, um, some tips um, in that 
Um, if you are going to cite, um, you certainly do not need to, but if you are going to cite, please cite professionally. Um, please make sure that your essay is um, communicating to us in a written form um, your dedication to the field and your passion for social work, which is why we ask the questions that we do. Um, it is important that you um, pre proofread that um, I would certainly recommend that you would share that document with somebody else um, after you've completed um, your drafts before you submit it to us. Make sure um, that there would not be anything that would cause a flag in terms of any um, unethical activities, in terms of references or your statement. Um, we want to make sure that we are um, admitting students of a high moral char character and high ethics. And so we want to make sure that all of the work that you're submitted, um, you have submitted for your application is indeed your own. So my last slide, and we just have a few minutes here, but if those of you, um, especially those of you that joined me late are, um, are able to stay on, I will continue to be on the call. Um, but this is just a review of all of our deadlines, pardon me. Um, so that blue hyperlink is gonna take you to our website, um, but I just wanted to provide you in this slide deck. Um, essentially, December 1st is our most critical um, deadline for, especially for the full-time on-campus format. Um, this is in part because um, the field experience begins as soon as classes begin in August. So therefore, we need to have students apply so that the admissions committee can make their decision, so that we can get back to students in a timely manner, and then students can ultimately um, perhaps even visit us um, March 2nd. You might want to mark your calendar is our open house. And so we invite um, students here um, to Cleveland, Ohio for a full day to learn more about the program. Um, you don't necessarily need to be admitted. However, um, historically, many of our students who do attend um, in March have been admitted. Um, and then once students have made the decision um, to deposit or the language we use is matriculate, um, that um, that once students have deposited and matriculated, then your field faculty will start reaching out to you pretty soon after commencement finishes, um, which here um, is in May. And so in order to keep the timing, um, we, um, we recognize that it, it might seem like an early deadline, but there's a great deal of planning and preparation that we need to do to ensure um, that the cohorts don't get too big, that we have the, um, the appropriate spaces available and that we have field sites. Um, I didn't mention, but I certainly um, would be remiss if I didn't mention that we have 1000 field locations all across the US um, to be available for our um, for our weekend and our online students, as well as many, many um, partnerships here in the Cleveland area. So I'm gonna actually go ahead um, and stop sharing my screen just so that I can um, open up um, the chat here and uh, address some of the questions just a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, some of these are specific and I'll be able to individually. Um, when will international students receive a decision for fall of 24? Well, the application just opened um, about, uh, let's see, it was, I believe the first or second week of September. And to be very honest, uh, many of us have been um, all across the country recruiting. I just got back from California myself. And so um, it will take some time, um, especially um, if you have applied and you um, have a, a complex um, transcript that needs to be reviewed. Um, it's difficult for us to let you know um, how long it will take um, an international student to receive a decision. Um, but you are certainly um, welcome on that final slide and I will just go ahead and type it in here so that everyone has access to it. So if you have specific questions about the application, the best thing is to email um, my colleague Charisse, um, who uh, maintains 
the Mandel School at case.edu um, email alias. Um, she is responsible for sort of the managing of the actual application. You should be able to go in and look at your portal to make sure that all of the documents have been submitted. Um, uh, there was a question in the chat about um, scholarships in the spring. We certainly provide scholarships year round. So um, we only begin um, our MSW um, in semesters other than the fall in our online part-time program. So if you are thinking about joining us for the spring, the only format that would be an option for you in terms of an MSW would be online, uh, meaning a US um, citizen, um, uh, in the part-time program. And so someone wanted to clarify that if they want to be considered for the merit scholarships, um, which should they? To be honest with you, um, the highest level of, of, um, um, of scholarship really will be that December 1st. That's the highest level in terms of the largest number of students that we can review helps us helps um, us identify who to refer um, candidates to the Leadership Fellows Scholarship to be able to move forward. And so really the December 1st is our highest priority deadline if you are considering the full-time program. If you're considering online, they had separate dates and it was on that last slide. And um, we can, to be honest with you, um, we we say um, the December 1st is our deadline. However, historically, we know that many students will um, apply in the fall as well as the spring semesters. Um, I was remiss not to mention, but if we do have any um, students who are interested specifically in our weekend program, all students, regardless of their um, academics, automatically receive a 35% um, tuition scholarship in the weekend program. And so once you are admitted, um, those letters in some ways are communicated a bit more quickly because all students receive the same, um, the same scholarship amount. Um, is it mandatory to use your references institutional email? Um, no, but we do like, uh, we, um, there's something about the integrity um, of if your reference um, is affiliated with another institution, um, it is a bit more reliable um, to send a reference that would be uh, at case.edu or at duke.edu as opposed to some uh, an individual um, person's Gmail. But we do accept it, um, it's just preferred. Okay, and so international students are absolutely under consideration for the leadership fellows. And so um, uh, we certainly do not discriminate um, or delineate with that regard. All full-time students um, are considered for the Leadership Fellows Program. Um, yes, and so um, someone had a question about um, about their recommender. And so you might uh, you might have received some previous communications. Um, last academic year, and even when we opened up um, our fall 2024 application portal, we were requiring two references. And then we really had some conversation um, around the Mandel School about the fact that that's the really one of the pieces of the application process that is out of your control. Um, that um, that that it was causing a delay or a glog, if you will, in certain students' application process as they waited for that final reference. So we would recommend that you submit two. However, we will only require one for this incoming class. And so um, your um, your app, your digital application will be considered um, complete. Um, and ready to be reviewed by the admissions committee once one app, uh, one reference has been submitted digitally. Um, and so we hope that that will be helpful to move people along in the process. Um, someone inquired about a thesis. Um, the Mandel School does not require a thesis in our Masters of Social Work. 
Um, yes, someone had a question about the 3-2 program. And so um, the 3-2 program is a very specific um, academic arrangement with about eight other small private liberal arts colleges almost exclusively lo um, located here in Cleveland, Ohio. And so I would just recommend um, that you would find that listing or um, the student whose first name starts with a V. Um, if you'd like to go ahead and email me um, your home institution, I could give you a very quick yes, no, um, if you are a three, two partner. Is it possible to submit two or more? You're welcome to submit them. I'm not sure that they will necessarily be read by the admissions committee. We have many, many applications. We want to give um, due diligence and review um, in earnest um, the, the three to five page essay that you've um, taken time to write. Um, yes, actually, um, the student who inquired uh, that it you are a three two part partner and actually that is my undergraduate alma mater so shout out to you um, I'm happy to um, connect with you offline um, if I can be of any assistance and this is actually a great wrap up um, Arabina I didn't know um, what you wanted to do in terms of providing contact information or if you would prefer to have people connect with you via LinkedIn or. Um, if you are in a position to share your contact information, there are many students on the call and I want to be um, protective of your time as a very busy graduate student. <laughs> okay, I'll just, um, I'll put my email in the chat. Um, anybody who wants to contact me, you're free to do so. Um, I think that we, we as international students have been a great resource for other international students. And I think that this year can testify that we have been. And so we'll continue to be a resource for all of you. I'll just put my uh, email in there so that anybody can just contact me, ask me any question, and I will be glad to assist you all. So yeah, I'll do that immediately, Lisa. Okay, wonderful. So if you do have um, specific questions that you would like to, um, to contact me individually about, I'm again putting my um, contact information um, in the chat to the entire group. But as I mentioned, um, this entire um, recorded webinar will be shared with you um, 24 hours um, and about 15 minutes from now. Um, um, and so please look for a sort of an automated email that says thanks for attending and there will be a link um, to this recording as well as I will provide um, the PowerPoint that will have all of the live links as well since obviously the recording um, will not have the links in it in a live functionality. So I'll be providing that within the system. Um, I thank you so much for your time. Thank you for um, your patience with our technology. We appreciate everyone um, joining us today. Um, don't forget about December 1st. Reach out if you have questions about the application itself. Um, Charisse, my colleague, um, would be happy to um, clarify for you um, if you have a question about um, specific um, components in terms of transcript requirements or the references, et cetera. So uh, I look forward to seeing you again on another event. Um, if those of you that are here already in the US are interested um, in coming for a campus visit, that certainly can be arranged. Um, just go, list, go on to, under admissions events and then um, visit us and then go ahead and um, request an opportunity for a personalized campus visit or join us on March 2nd. Put that on your calendar um, and join us for a full open house. Um, I think Arabina's already got it on her calendar. I have it on mine. Um, you'll have the opportunity to meet with um, faculty, staff, students, and really get a sense of the Mandel community. So thank you so much, very much, um, and we wish you well. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Arabina. You were exceptional as always. And so I wouldn't, wouldn't be remiss to end the recording without thanking you so very much. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Anytime. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you.